Hi, all. I'm Dan Smigrod, founder of the We Get Around Network Forum. Today is Thursday, March 16th, 2023, and you're watching WGAN-TV Live at 5. We have an awesome show for you today. Simon Says, Matterport plus SimLab, Simon for Facilities Management, Maintenance, and Design. And our subject matter experts on today's show to fill us in are SimLab founder and CEO, Marek Kozlak. Hey, Marek, good to see you. Hello. Thanks for being on the show again today. Thank you for hosting us. And SimLab, Simon product owner, Mikau Shopa. Hey, Mikau, uh, thanks for being on the show again today. Hello, everybody. Thank you for, for our in invitation for today's show. Awesome. Merrick, before we jump into the topic for today, how about a top line on the different products SimLab offers and your sweet spot for those products? Okay, so uh, SimLab is a tech company. We are uh, located in Poland and we are working on top of the Matterport technology, who is our biggest partner and investor in our seed round. And we have created two products that you have probably seen before, which are quite famous in the Matterport community. One is called Stages, which we call Matterport Timelapse or Matterport Timeline uh, with the split screen view or before after effect. Simon is our next part, uh, next step software after Stages, which is mostly for construction. Simon is for the facility management and operation of the building on a daily basis using a Matterport model with a couple of the nice assets and the modules that we will show you today. And our in-house project is for someone who is like on their enterprise level, having over 100, 1000 Matterport model on the account and how to navigate between the models, jump between them with the AI support and a direct connection between the model A and model B and how they are uh, being um, accessible from the as administration point of view. Awesome. We've actually had both of you as guests on the show before, and we've done deep dive intros to Sim, uh, SimLab Stages, SimLab Simon, and SimLab In-House. All of those WGAN TV Live at Five shows can be seen at wgan.info forward slash SimLab on WGAN. So we're going to assume for today's purpose that you've already, our viewers have already done a deep dive into intro to SimLab, Simon plus Matterport, uh, uh, and even to Matterport plus SimLab in-house. Uh, these are two shows uh, that we've done deep dives uh, and that way we'll be able to move faster through today's show because we we covered a lot of ground in, in these previous shows about uh, SimLab. Uh, uh, Merrick, uh, in terms of uh, today's topic, uh, Matterport plus SimLab, Simon for facilities management, maintenance and design, uh, uh, perhaps you could begin maybe with the ticket task manager. So uh, it looks like uh, uh, Merrick's screen has maybe is frozen. Maybe if we could go back to you, Mikau, do you want to begin in terms of that ticket task manager? And perhaps if Merrick can hear us, he can uh, maybe sign out and sign back in. Okay, no problem. Uh, we are the ticketing, uh, the ticketing system according to the to the needs of the customer that uh, we bring to the customer possibility to adding the most important uh, terms for their assets. For example, if we have some, I don't know, the, the air purifier on or something else that uh, means that we can put the events, maybe the recurring events that need to be uh, changing the filters and changing um, some, some other stuff to make it maintenance services every time it should be uh, done. I see Marek is coming back. Yeah, and I heard what you said, and this is actually a funny story because we are not, we were not thinking about those uh, functionalities before, focusing mostly on the building control and automation of the building from the smart home approach or the industry 4.0 approach. But we were asked by our customers, mostly enterprise level customers, saying, "Oh, but we have these thousands of assets which we would like to maintain inside of the Matterport beautiful visualization. How can you help us?" 
and oh we have a ticketing system needed for our maintenance teams or like a, how to integrate it with our calendar so that's why simon evaluated from the iot system uh, on top of the motherboards to the facility and operating system for any building which uh, is actually motherboard scanned up to now so at a big picture level how does this ticketing task manager work uh is this is this your ticket is this a SimLab ticket task manager? Are you using existing content management systems that are uh, used in the facilities management space? Uh, a combination of both? How does that work? I, I would say combination of both because we have our own very basic system, which Michael will show you guys today, which actually allows you to create a ticket, everything visual. So instead of having like this massive uh, you know, the management softwares that people are actually using. We have a very pleasant visual interface that you, as putting matter tag, you add the ticket to the problem in your space. And then you can add, of course, all of this content and the communication with pictures, but also with the uh, chat kind of the systems with notifications. And it's very basic. But if the customers, which is an enterprise level with one or more facilities, has his own already existing very complex comprehensive systems, we can integrate it to our and create kind of the OEM for that part of the um, industry or for that particular customer as well. And, and, and what systems do you presently integrate to? Which CMMS systems are integrated into SimLab Simon today? Well, uh, I don't want to say it's like a very general systems because it was individual toolkits uh, customers were having in their own factory, nothing major brand branded. It was just, you know, oh, we are using this kind of the communication. How can we cooperate with you guys? So we gave them, oh, we need to have an input, input signals in that kind of the uh, structure. And then we can just work and, and have it as the very quick service for you to show it in the Matterport. Yes, but are, are there existing CMMS, CMMS systems that are presently integrated with SimLab no, not, Simon? No, not of the, uh, not of the uh, major line of the products, not yet. Uh, we are very much happy if uh, some of the viewers would like to test this with their own system they're already using. We will be more than happy to integrate it. It was like more individual solutions people were having for the factories. Uh, okay, so uh, so uh, just to clarify, SimLab Simon has its own timeline feature, smart system meets facilities management tool that includes this task manager as a communications tool, uh, ready to go, works today. Mikau is going to show us some of that, or perhaps you're going to, uh, yeah, Mikau is going to show us some of that shortly. Um, but if a client is already using a specific CMMS system and would like it integrated with Matterport, uh, SimLab is ready, willing, and able to, to build out that integration. Very much so. Okay, awesome. And the, and, and uh, just to clarify on some of the features in the task manager today, could you uh, just describe, I think you mentioned photo, video, um, and some other features? Yep, yeah, uh, fast communication, visual communication, whatever you can do on a construction site or facility site or in the public building, just take your cell phone, make a photo, record your voice, or just attach any content like a spare part catalogs or um, web uh, links to the uh, actually components you need to buy or change. Pretty much things that without engineering knowledge, you would like to uh, communicate what's wrong with the facility and how to fix it. And, and how does this task manager uh, relate to asset management or scheduling and maintenance? Michael, you want to answer that one? Yeah, I can. Uh, it's not uh, directly related, but if we have the the task according to the particular asset, for example, that will be the task for the for the air conditioning unit, we always can check, uh, for example, the documentation, the spare part catalog that gives the the serviceman the possibility to prepare himself and uh, time saving in, into the site yeah because we had the clients that they have uh, 
couple of of, of uh, air conditioning in, in, into one side and customer is only the user is is only putting information about the air conditioning is broken but which one yeah and using the the, the matterport and the localization the serviceman can uh, check the exact position of the of the problem and uh, and prepare to fix it like the taking the ladder taking the spare parts taking the filters everything with him not goes twice to the same uh, to the same issue but also uh, that works backwards as well because each asset has a calendar feature and if yeah. you have like a couple of hundreds of the assets in the space we read in our um, calendar timeline all of these events from each individual asset building kind of the next plans what's happening next week next month and how you need to prepare yourself uh, on the maintenance and cost in the you know, servicing those things so we, it works both directions so if you are import assets to the simon then you can already put the that particular asset needs some action plan in the next six months or 12 months which is like a annual uh, re replicable event or it's just one time uh, shot to do something because now it's broken Okay, how about we jump into a, a demo of that? Uh, uh, Mikhail, you want to show us? Yeah, that will be a pleasure. Okay. And uh, while he's setting up, uh, you can go to the main uh, website, uh, Simlab Inc., S I M L A B I N C dot com, or you can go directly to the uh, uh, Simlab Simon website, S I M hyphen O N dot com. Uh, Mikhail, uh, we're in your demo. Okay, great. We are now into the in our our Simon solution. Uh, as you see here on the background, we have the the Matterport scan, and we are now on the asset layer. As you see here, the the all the icons is the assets we are we have tagged into the our office uh, space. This is our office uh, where we are um, working every day and every night <laughs> and also uh, sometimes every weekend but uh, here we have the here we have the assets and we can put all the information inside that for example in the printer we have the uh, free text uh, free text and uh, also some uh, photographs some movies and uh, and some documents like the spare part catalog that can be also the warranty card and so on and the timeline uh, feature is uh, is located here. We can put the the events on the particular asset. Here we have the printer, and we know that the uh, next maintenance service is uh, something like uh, one week from now, and the second one printer service, uh, and it's in another month. Yeah. Uh, be before you move on, let me just follow up on that. So on March twenty fourth is is that next maintenance service is that going to trigger something or is that just the calendar item and it sits in the calendar it sits right now it sits in the calendar but in the in the near future that will be also sending the notification to the uh, assigned to that uh, serviceman that he knows okay tomorrow i need to go to the to the simlab company and uh and fix or or the or check the the printer mm -hmm. but also this is what we said before this is a trigger in our visualization so that particular endpoint which is the event can be synchronized with your own internal toolkits yeah and so we does have that this... mean there's a ah, there's your event timeline okay great so you can see what's coming up in terms of of scheduling uh that there are action items associated with that printer uh, watering the plants and some inspections yeah exactly here we have the timeline and as you see here we have the um, current events for today for the for the future and also i can move on the past that see uh, what's happened in the past and what is very very nice and important into the the matterport that uh, we can check exactly which one asset which one uh, item in our space need to be uh, checked or or uh, which location is is uh, connected to the to the asset uh, for example this air purifier it needs today the filter replacement i can click here and i'm automatically going into the into the location where it is 
So you can either move from the timeline to the asset or from the asset to the timeline. Exactly, yes. And, and I, I can check what I'm here hearing the... is that there's a, a couple things that are coming. And uh, just as my printer presently orders toner automatically through Amazon, that uh, SimLab Simon will automate perhaps an, either an email that goes out to the service tech uh, or maybe some other more, even more advanced feature. Yeah. From this and all of the other devices in the same office. Yeah. Right now we can put also the some, for example, the the link to the uh, to the shop where we can buy the, uh, for example, the filters, and also putting the uh, photographs which filter is uh, uh, according to the to the particular asset. Right now I have the, I think poor connection for the internet because I have many many things open. <laughs> Sorry for that. Okay. Uh... And is is there other other features that you wanted to sh show us that's new and different since we did a previous SimLabs Simon intro deep dive demo? Okay, well, we can show. Yes. Yeah. So look what we are doing in this moment. Right now, we were notifying people that oh, there is an event on your timeline, which means there's a filter replacement. So now we can have a intro materials like a movie how to do it yourself the uh, link where you can buy it the invoice to show basically how much it costed in the past so you can collect all this data and now you can of course do it but if you don't want to do this yourself michael show what's next happening happening and what's new yes going forward the customer needs uh, we also made the ticketing system ticketing system is uh, something like communicator be between the user and the facility manager into the into the space uh, to do that uh, if we have some issue with uh, with our uh, some some kind of asset uh, we can add the new ticket into the, our system so ju and just for, for clarification because it, it, it may not have been obvious but up in the top right menu where there are two little cards, you had clicked on those. If, it, if in fact if we could just go back for a second, <clears throat> take us back to that main menu, and then to the left, where there were two icons, top right. If we go back to the top right, top right. Yep. Yeah. So that's where you clicked in order to uh, say, "I want to add an action item, a task." Yeah, because we have we have a couple of layers into the, our software, and the one layer is the is the assets. And when I'm showing right now, the second layer right. is the event timeline. Okay, we, so have we have also a, a the layer for assets, a layer for timeline, a layer yeah, for IoT. For IoT, which one I showed in the and the a layer for movie. tasks. Yeah, and layer and, for the and ticketing okay, so system. that's where you clicked yeah. in order to call up. Uh, your task manager, uh, you have a problem, you need something fixed, and then you were about to click on the plus button, and then I believe then go place where you want to tag for that ticket uh, to be located. Yeah. Okay. I'm now on the on the ticket creator, and I can put some some ticket uh, name, for example, this filter uh, replacement. I can uh, add. Sorry for the for the letters. Uh, I can add uh, then uh, some stakeholder like the responsible person that will be Marek right now in this in this case, putting some description. I can also add some uh, documents like the uh, photographs for the for the filter you uh, or Mark should buy. So I think what we talked about stuff. previously is you could add text, photos, PDFs, video, um, uh, uh, timing issues. So that's yeah, but but that was for the for the asset itself. Ah, here here we have uh, here we can put the current situation. For example, that can be also some uh, problem or some issue with the with some device you have in your in your space. You can put the uh, take the picture 
for example, the leaking air conditioning unit and put inside to give the, the serviceman or some facility manager the clarified information what happened with the with the issue you want to uh, to put in, inside the system. Okay. <clears throat> and Is there then, a calendar feature related to this uh, task? No, no, no. It's not calendar features. It's the uh, daily basis communicator between the user and the facility manager. Okay. Can you save that and we see uh, that? That's yeah, the... I can. I can save that. And that goes to the to the Marek right now. Uh, the information about the. Uh, about the sorry, issue. I'm I'm confused. I don't see the tag on that on that uh, air. Because I'm line. I'm I'm not uh, putting the tag yet. I can uh, put it another one. Editing the ticket, and now I'm going the plus, and putting the tag inside. Ah, uh, so good. first you created the issue. And then you assign the position. Yeah, I can do it into one into one step. It, it's not a problem. Uh, but right now I'm forgetting about it and and saving and then going back and, and putting the tag. It's also possible. I can also change the position uh, after the after the creating the ticket. Okay, that's that's important thing that we have this splitted because if you have some tickets or like some uh, maintenance callbacks, we can again talk to your system, to your internal system, load them mm -hmm. in like a bulk load, and then just relocate it in the space so you basically know where to go. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Was there anything else to show us before we move on to the next topic? Well, I can just say that right now in my uh, uh, application, I see the notification bar that I see that I was awarded with the ticket for uh, for maintenance. And now I can actually write back Michael about that uh, subject. So there is like a communication chat box that works lifetime. And if I have fit the replacement, I'm just putting the answer right about now. Is that um, in? You, okay. you want to show us what you're doing? No, actually, I don't have to okay. because I'm just will write okay. an answer, and it's gonna pop up in the and, my and, uh, screen in a second. I'm sorry, Merrick. For clarification, what, did that come as a normal email, or is that showing up in the Matterport? Uh, that's showing in a Simon. That's showing Simon uh, in Simon notification panel. So when you log into the Simon, you have like a you know blinking uh, icon saying, "Okay, there is some new." Ticket, for example, for myself, so you should see it in um, in your uh, screen. So right now, Michael, when I answer to him, he see the notification. Oh, there is like a one maintenance subject. It's assigned to me. Okay, uh, and and then I can if, show it if if you want. It's not no, so I'm good. On so we we've covered kind of like asset management, scheduling, and maintenance. Is there an IoT device control piece of this conversation? Well, as you could see, everything is on one uh, icon uh, line uh, yes. uh, line uh, menu. So that means that if you want to see what's happening in the IoT, you just click IoT. If something is not working, you place ticket on that IoT. If you want to see what IoT is not working, you see that there is no signal or something. All of the uh, documentations and all of the contact details are in the asset store so everything in one visual interface but on a different kind of the features yes. on, with those so icons. E each of those icons on the right side there was an icon for the timeline an icon for assets and or a, a tag a tab maybe you call it a tab uh, or is an mm -hmm. icon and an icon for the assets for scheduling what i and think for calendar for Internet of Thing, the uh, IoT devices, and and then uh, creating a ticket uh, in order to uh, facilitate a communication based on tagging an item in a space. Yes. Okay. Cool. So uh, before we move on, I I just think it may be in, important to highlight because I, I, I uh, Mikau, I know you showed me this feature, I think, on our, our last show together. Uh, and it's probably really relevant because I could say, oh, well, I'm a I'm using I'm an enterprise client. I'm using Matterport. I already have hundreds of matter tags that I've done. Uh, I like what I'm seeing with SimLab Simon. 
but I'm really hesitant to move because I know it was super painful to create, if not dozens, hundreds of matter tags. So do you have a solution you want to tell us about for that enterprise client that has many Matterport spaces already using matter tags to annotate hundreds of locations? We can we can import it into the our space as well. So you if you've done your job once, you don't lose anything. We just importing this both for stages and both for Simon. So it's just additional features that you can use in our software on top of the Matterport already. And does the enterprise client do that import, or is that something that you do as a uh, service to help? Uh, bring that onboard that enterprise client to the SimLab Simon platform. Today, it's uh, for stages. It's already working as the self toolkit because it's very easy. You just select to reach stage, and you know if it's got information or the issue or the ticket. That's very simple. And we are implementing the same system in uh, Simon right about now. In uh, today times, it's just a service. So if you have already your thousands of the tags. We can do it in the like a one working day for you, but in the next couple of weeks, it's coming as the normal feature. So probably when you're going to be watching this movie, it's already one of our um, main features uh, working okay. with. So today is Thursday, March 16, 2023. Uh, by uh, May 1, 2023, that should be a feature that is automated. Uh, but if not, SimLab can do that for you to help migrate you to the SimLab Simon platform. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, uh, virtual staging, do you want to take us through uh, some yes, of the Yes, I'm, I'm smiling because, you know, now it was engineering work up till now. And now is the cool part starts where I'm so excited because now we are doing things that I wanted to do from the beginning of when I've seen Matterport models. Oh, this cool geometry, you know, I will arrange my house. And with the staging, uh, we actually made it happen within the Simon. So I will just show you this in a second. Awesome. Do you want to talk a little bit more about what you can do with SimLab Simon can do in terms of virtual staging before you actually take us into a demo? Well, uh, we have prepared up today uh, like a working solution and proof of concept. So now with this uh, introduction, we also invite you to collaboration because we have, let's say, 100 assets, which are high quality 3D models uh, with uh, e-commerce link and connection, which means that they are very, very high visual products uh, to, to look at. Uh, but if you are having your own library of uh, uh, product portfolio, you would like all of the Matterport customers to have access to within Simon, it's going to be possible. So today we have a working version and now we invite everybody to collaborate saying, oh, you can place your products in the Matterport community with just one click. And it's really, really easy to do it. Okay. You want to show us? Yes, that's going to be my pleasure. So let me share my okay. screen right uh, now. Again, while Merrick's setting up, uh, you can go to www.simlabinc.com and uh, directly to the Simon uh, microsite at sim-on.com. Uh, Merrick, we're looking at your screen. Okay, so just to uh, close the subject of the maintenance, as you see, uh, this is the communication of the issue that uh, Michael just did. And as you see here, I uh, have this on my checklist. So that's basically uh, pretty fast at working in the real time. So you can collaborate like this. But the cool thing starts when I gonna select the next button, which we have in here. So you see it's like a sofa icon. If I'm gonna turn it on, this is where magic happens. And now we are bringing all of those beautiful 3D assets into the Matterport space. So, so for, as you for clarification, because I didn't see anything happen, you're in the top left corner and you clicked on the sofa and is it about to load uh, digital assets that you can be- I have not seen anything happen because we optimize our algorithm and it's so fast that it's happening instantly mostly. So if I'm going to click it here, the sofa, 
Uh, so if you don't see anything, so maybe you, we can play a little bit game saying which objects are virtual, which objects are true. So uh, ah, as you ah, see oh, here, I see. I didn't even notice it was that quick. It, the uh, uh, I, and I, and I wasn't being funny that the, like oh that you know uh, I, I literally did not see that you had added the chairs to the space. It was like yes. that. Because as you see here, next to the sofa, we have like our uh, layouts. That means is that you can create many um, layers and many component sets, which you actually can replace one to another. So if you are uh, thinking about uh, staging your new office or your new home with a different furniture or different uh, uh, assets, then you can actually create them in a different scenario, scenario one, scenario two, and just load them in almost no time. So if I'm gonna switch it off, you will see that those two sofas are actually true sofas scanned on the Matterport uh, camera. And those two of those here are virtual. So one click and they are gone. So uh, this is basically how it works. So uh, you can enable them, close them, uh, bring up the layer that you are interested in. So let me just show it again. So this is how we load our 3D models. And this is like a virtual object which is added to the Matterport with the shadow and with a very nice merging, recognizing the geometry in the Matterport model as well. Uh, so the, the, the cool situation is that, look, this uh, um, small uh, plant, it's actually put it on the scanned uh, table. So it also recognizes that kind of the uh, snapping surfaces that it can be laid out okay. on. Great. Do you want to show us a, a, a pallet of furniture and place one into the space? My pleasure. So how to run it for all of the Simon users, which already have access to our software. And still, please remember, you can register on simon.com free of charge and start using this free of charge. There is some um, open software uh, licenses as well. But if you're going to run it here, you have interior editor. This is how you turn it on. So now you see that uh, when I run in a menu interior editor, that brings uh, objects in several categories. And this is where we invite you to cooperate with us to bring more of those categories uh, to our system and searching engine. So of course you can search by placing like sofa, I'm sorry, sofa. So it's pretty easy to find what you were looking for in this 100 library objects today, but you can Google, uh, search for consumer electronics, you can search for decoration, you can search for furnitures, and basically uh, those categories are pretty self-explaining up till now. So uh, how it works, let's say that we will not damage this uh, set here. So let's maybe go to our Simlab kitchen and we see here that we have our uh, coffee machine. So let's see what kind of the appliances and consumer electronics you can bring. So today we have this kettle, one click, and now I can put the kettle in the uh, objects I want. But for example, uh, yeah, let me move maybe one step closer. So the kettle again, and you see it tracks the surfaces. So I can put the new one versus the old one, add a toaster to it as well. And here's my toaster if you want to rotate it uh, facing the user in this moment. So yeah, I can do it like this. And as you see, it's pretty easy, self-explanatory. Just click objects, place it in a space on the surface you want. So if you want to add more things like a decoration, so look how fast it is. Let's take this plant tree and put it maybe here in the in the corridor just for fun. So pretty easy, pretty fast. You can put as many of those assets as you want and create uh, sets of those assets for uh, your own uh, needs. Well, I, I, I know mm -hmm. you're the founder and CEO, but I think you found yourself a new career path here as a virtual stager. You look pretty adept at this, Merrick. I don't know if someone actually would like to put this in that place I did right now, but really it's cool and it's fun. You know, So imagine you have thousands of those objects in the library and then you can just create and furnish and stage any open space. So uh, of course, what you see here in this editor, it's everything is pretty much complex on kind of the layers. You can see how many assets you have placed. You can create a, a new layout, for example, I don't know, like a, a test. Yeah. I, I, I took you off screens here and I, I think we kind of get it. Uh, mm -hmm. 
again, you look pretty adept at doing this. Is this, is it a, what's the learning curve look like? Is this like, oh, this is super easy to pick up and you're, you're just, it's just not hard. You can do it. I challenge everybody that five minutes should be enough in clicking those options to know okay. basically how to create the and staging of your apartment. Can, can you give us a little bit of the roadmap? Because you, you mentioned that there's about a hundred objects there. Uh, obviously not a, enough to to um, everybody wants more. When When's more coming? Or is it really I bring my own uh, digital assets with me and import them into uh, SimLab Simon? We are observing the market right now and what's the response about that uh, basic uh, feature that we are just uh, having here. And uh, we are trying to uh, bring more uh, partners to it, like uh, furniture stores, brands that can actually put those features. Because the ones that we want to publish, we want them to be live objects. Because if I can show my screen again for a second, okay. I will just show you more things, which are very important in my opinion. Because if you see here, I just created the layer of like test environment. But if I'm going to go to my old one, which is called a comfort set, we create a list of the objects that you have in that particular uh, set that you created. And if you're going to exit the editor, is that what we want to use it as the professional toolkit. And if you see that the models are being loaded here, each of the assets played in the space, they have this kind of the orange tag. The orange tag for us is the e-commerce connection, which means is that that chair actually is a live product. So if you're going to click it and go to shop, this is where you can buy it. So this is how we want to connect user with e-commerce uh, environment and actually buy that object inside of the Simon. So I'm a little bit confused. Are you showing me proof of concept or are you showing me this is connected to Shopify and you're you're ready to go? I am showing you ready to go product, but with the 100 objects today, inviting all of the e-shops and Shopify uh, stores to connect into the Matterport environment and bring your products into the Simon for all of the community of million of apartments ready and uh, already digitized. So which e-commerce platforms are presently integrated with SimLab, Simon for Matterport integration? Uh, we know how to work with Shopify, Magenta, so we can bring those. But usually, if you are an online store, we can bring your product line into the Simon directly from your website. Uh, so I'm a little bit confused. Are you using the content management system of the shopping platform to manage the inventory? Or is it something else happening? We are using a content management system for the uh, e-commerce brand. So if you are like a, uh, IKEA, we can connect to your database and bring your product into the uh, Simon solution. Okay, so uh, you're ready, willing, and able to do integrations with uh, Shopify. I, I think I heard one other platform. Mag uh, yes, Magenta. Magenta and uh, and you're able to uh, you you welcome the opportunity to build out to other platforms if that's the case. Yes. Okay. Cool. So uh, before we move on, is there anything else on virtual staging meets SimLab stages meets Matterport? Well, bring your products to the to the Matterport digitized digital twins. And uh, this is also what I said today, we are testing the market and seeing the response, which is fantastic. And actually everybody else uh, who is using this are asking us to bring their own product. We did not want to do it yet, but that feature is also coming in the next couple of weeks. So that's gonna be a pretty uh, good for you if you are a 3D model or 3D graphic company or have access to the 3D models from your or architect, you can bring your own data into the Simon as well in the next release of our software, which will take us a couple of weeks only. Okay, great. Uh, uh, big picture, what's next for SimLab? Well, as you see, we moved from the IoT and the home automation systems, most towards the asset and the management of the of those assets on the you know, timeline with the ticketing system and so on. So now we are working very much on our AI uh, modules, which means is that we will have a wizard 
which will help you to create your own asset list. So of course you can create your own categories of the furnitures, uh, appliances right now. And now we will drive AI behind it to say, oh, we recognize you have a washing machine in that room, in that space. Would you like to bring a warranty card or like a maintenance timelines for your um, facility management module of Simon? So I'm a little bit confused. Sounds very exciting. Uh, is there a machine learning training set that's applied to a Matterport customer's Matterport spaces and to train and say, okay, this is the, the chiller, this is the boiler, this is... Yes, Simon is building our own algorithm to do it for you. So when you're going to run Simon for the first time, we will recognize, oh, you have like a two AC units on in your apartment. Would you like us to keep a maintenance uh, kind of the scheduling for them? Which means that, you know, fixing, changing, replacing and placing, for example, like a connection to our suggested maintenance team and so on. So yes, we're gonna be recognizing the most critical categories of the objects, which usually requires maintenance so you can have an AI system and a calendar thinking for you how and what needs to be fixed in your house in the next couple of months. So, uh, so just to be clear, houses are the, the, the first training set versus an AEC space versus an MEP space. Uh, yes. And, and, uh, yeah, so that's why we are directing this mostly for the hotels which have a problem in tracking all of those, uh, you know, which uh, thermostat needs to be replaced or, or whatsoever, or when they were mounted in the space or what size, uh, actually what type are on the first floor, which is the fifth floor. So uh, yeah, we are aiming here like uh, hotels in that feature mostly, but anybody using a Matterport uh, will be able to use it. But in the first uh, launch, we will have a general objects which you can find in the hotels uh, or like apartments. Okay, so so I, I I'm just imagining that that Simlab has taken Matterport spaces that are of hotels and are of apartments or maybe homes, houses, maybe multifamily, and are doing uh, training for the AI to recognize refrigerators, stoves, beds dressers, counters, lamps, uh, whatever the objects are in hotels, in houses, in apartments. And then when a Matterport customer comes to you and says, I, I don't really want to go tag hundreds or thousands of objects. Can you automate that process for me and just assign tags you're smiling okay. help me under because I, i'm smiling because it's a second type of the ai that we are working on that was supposed to be a i don't want to say big secret but big surprise for the users especially for the enterprise one is that first this first problem is to detect your object so okay this is ac unit this is like a washing machine and so on but in the second one which we are working on the second parallel works conducted in the in the simon feature is that you will be able to uh, circle the object inside of your space saying, oh, this is a thermostat or this is the lamp. Find me all of the other ones in the floor of the fifth floor for the hotel. So then you actually don't have to count that you have 100 you know, uh, lighting uh, fixtures on the ceiling in that hotel. We will tag it for you automatically that this is that part number, SKU number for the product. And this is how you probably imagine that, you know, uh, you have 100 lamps that you need to service in the one time uh, in that particular moment of, of, uh, uh, of the next year. Okay, so phase one, phase two. Phase one, today is Thursday, March 16th, 2023. When will we see the ability to have the SimLab AI go discover objects and tag them 
Well, this is not a trivial job, so it's coming by the end of the year. So we are working on this very, very deeply, but those algorithms are quite complex development process. So I think it's going to take us a couple of next months, and we are aiming before the end of the year to release it in the first stage, at least to recognize the objects, and then first attempts to identify any other similar one to the one that I have just marked. So in phase two, uh, where I circle an object and say, you know, go go find me all the the thousands of ceiling tiles and uh, light fixtures in in my five story hotel. Uh, how long will uh, when will that feature be available? I would love to say by the end of the year, but uh, you know this is development and this is AI. This is going to the completely new areas of the AI, uh, even on the toolkits that you have commercially available on the market. So uh, let's hope it's going to be like a uh, fall of the, you know, this year and the next one. But we are aiming to have the first results that we can release as the alpha by the end of the year. Okay. Now, I know that founders and CEOs are always extremely optimistic. I'm going to look to Mikau because you're actually the uh, uh, Simon product owner. And I, uh, ne never mind Merrick. What's the timing? When, when is it really going to happen? Yeah, I need to. I need to agree with with Marek. Um, uh, that's that goes uh, till end of the year for sure. Okay, so we we have product in uh, in agreement. Yeah, right now we have the libraries ready. Now it's the time for the machine learning and and making the all magic possible to to get the uh, algorithms ready and 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 ready to to launch for the customers. Okay, so uh, last month I was at uh, Geo Week in Denver, and the rumors on the floor of the convention was that Matterport is working hard and fast uh, at AI, and it seems like you've described exactly the two things that Matterport is rumored to be working on. Is is this an implementation of a rumored? Matterport machine learning and AI, or is this a uh, in-house sim lab uh, uh, developed uh, uh, machine learning AI um, that's coming in 2023? Well, uh, as a partner, we have access to what Matterport is uh, doing right now and the libraries that he learned on top of all of the Matterport spaces already in the cloud. But we are not using this. We are using our own uh, research, especially that we are very much connected to the university, technical university uh, environment. So uh, there is some PhD uh, th thesis around what we are doing as the authoring solutions. And that's our own development. OK, awesome. Uh, anything else of what's coming in 2023 that you want to talk about, Merrick? Well, uh, right now we are opening mostly for the partners. Uh, up to now, we were uh, mostly focusing on creating the product version one. Now it's going to be after release version two available in the next couple of uh, weeks and months with this uh, e-commerce uh, first modules. Uh, and uh, just focusing right now on bringing the product to the market. This is our goals. Whatever features like the AI, a are which are coming also you know virtual tagging the tasks and connecting them to the geolocation points in the space it's 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 coming and we are not stopping we can have hundreds of those ideas and we need just to prioritize which are going first to the market and the product will be constantly developing and this is what we can promise to all of the community and everybody that are listening us to right now. Now, you, uh, Simlab already has many clients. So are, are, do you already have the clients that you need for beta, for beta development on the uh, facilities management and as well as the AI? Or are you still looking for clients that are eager to do a deep dive into Matterport Plus facilities management, leveraging uh, Matterport Plus Simlab Simon? Very much so. So if everybody, anybody would like to test it and actually try it or even develop it further with us for much more deep, advanced options, we are more than open. 
And please remember that we are the European based company. So we are doing a lot of implementation and tests internally here in Europe, Austria, mostly Poland, Austria. Uh, we will have one in Germany that we are doing. A couple of the factories from Japan are connecting to our system, but we are not having much presence on the US market due to the time uh, difference. So anybody that would like to partner with us up on a technical level from the US will be more than welcomed because for us, it's also new standards that we need to learn how the systems and local software for the facility manager on the market works in the uh, US and we need to connect it. So please connect us with and contact us so uh, we can think about the integration using your case uh, uh, study example, for example. Okay, and just, uh, for clarification, this is actually, I wanna say in four categories that you, you are eager to have uh, enterprise size clients uh, working with Matterport plus SimLab Simon for facilities management, for virtual staging, for e commerce within the virtual staging, uh, and even in terms of the AI for object identification based on a set of objects that SimLab has identified and then flipping that around for objects that the client wants to identify and go find that in spaces. And ideally clients that have hundreds, if not thousands of Matterport tours uh, as a, uh, a data set to test and learn with. Is, uh, did I summarize that okay? That's our mission. That's our goal. And this is where we want to be. Okay. So uh, anyone who's interested can go to uh, the parent website, simlabinc.com or the microsite, uh, sim-on.com and go to the contact us tab or in the We Get Around Network forum, just reach out to at simlab. Uh, um before we go is two questions. First, is there anything we haven't discussed that we that we should be talking about today? Well, the two biggest uh, new things inside of the Simon is ticketing system, which simplify the communication between the collaborators on the one Matterport space and uh, virtual staging, which now is so easy to use that just select your objects, add it, or add your own object to the Simon and just do your do it yourself. So that's the most important features that are happening right now. And we are more than happy to see more registrations coming on our website, because please remember that those features you can use free of charge within our license model. Awesome. And then I, I want to ask Mikhail, uh, one last question. I'm going to come back to you, Merrick, for the final question. Mikhail, is the... Uh, is the Simon product owner, if you have just 30 seconds to summarize, uh, this is probably the hardest question, but how in 30 seconds, no more, how do you summarize what Simon, um, SimLab's Simon is all about? It's all about the platform for the home and facility and office operating system, the complex operating system that you can uh, bring your space into the 3D, into the virtual reality and uh, connecting the IoT devices, steering your home, uh, containing the, the all information about the assets, everything you have in your home and also communicating between the users, between you and the, on your facility manager and uh, keeping in mind every terms you have in your home uh, according to the maintenance, according to the uh, your family duties, because the ticketing system is also for that uh, kind of, of thing can be used. Awesome. And uh, uh, Merrick, I'm going to ask you maybe equally as hard question. I, I mean, I think this is our fifth or sixth show that we've 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 done with SimLab. Uh, it seems like SimLab iterates at the fastest pace I've ever seen for an emerging technology company. Uh, it's really super. It's really awesome. I I wonder how in 30 seconds you would describe the vision 
of SimLab, given that you have so many different initiatives going on? Well, uh, if you think about digital twin, people are thinking Matterport today. But if you think about digital twin and how to use it, I think people to think SimLab solutions will actually leverage 3D model that you get from the Matterport. So we are bringing your 3D experience to life on a daily basis. Never mind if, never mind if it's like a facility management, IoT control, staging for the documentation of the EAC. If you are thinking digital twin, the true life digital twin is with SimLab. That's why all of the features and all of the next uh, generation software upgrades are coming because Matterport is the most common platform with millions of the digitized houses, but what to do with them? Thinking what to do with them, think similar. Awesome. Merrick, thanks for being on the show today. Thank you, Dan. Macau, thanks for being on the show today. Thank you very much. We've been visiting today with SimLab founder and CEO, Merrick Kozlak, and SimLab Simon product owner, Mikhail Shopa. I am Dan Smigrod, founder of the We Get Around Network Forum, and you've been watching WGAN-TV live.